Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I am your host, Eric Smith, and today I am talking about Morbius, the Living Vampire, Blood Ties, by Brendan Deneen. Uh, this is from Titan Books. There you go. Of course, it's a Marvel novel. Uh, this is an original novel about Morbius, the Living Vampire, a character uh, that I am a huge fan of. I'm looking straight over there. I have a PV, PVP, PVC, whatever it is, PVC, uh, Morbius statue over there. That's absolutely gorgeous. And over in that direction, you can't really see where I'm pointing over in that direction. I have uh, the Morbius Omnibus, which is a huge hardcover that reprints all the old Morbius stuff. Um, so now I was very excited to see there was a Morbius novel coming out. I assume it's because there's a Morbius movie coming out. Uh, and so, this book, in this book, uh, I guess, first of all, it, do I need to tell you this part first? I don't know. It takes place in between issues of Vampire Tales, I think is the book, that uh, it was a... a a black and white comic book magazine that Marvel published. It had more adult content. Uh, they, I loved those old black and white magazines they used to have back in the day. Uh, but so this story takes place just in between issues of that. So it's ostensibly, I mean, those were back in the seventies. But this story doesn't really. I don't think it gives any indication of when it's taking place. So sort of floating in a timeless limbo, uh, even though it technically takes place between stories in the 70s, it could take place at any time because, you know, those stories technically could take place at any time. But I don't think there's any cell phones or anything in this. Anyway, so it's it's taking place then. Um, so uh, Morbius and Amanda Saint... Let's make sure that's her name. Yes, Amanda Saint. Uh, are looking for the Demon Fire Cult. They're in New York. Uh, and again, this is, I think originally uh, Amanda Saint was introduced in San Francisco. Morbius was stalking her, but then he saves her from the Demon Fire Cult. And it turns out her mother, her sister, her boyfriend are all members uh, so after that confrontation, uh, they're looking for her mother, Amanda Saint's mother, and her father because he's he left. He's searching for the mom. Uh, so Morbius and Amanda are in New York, and Amanda is working at a hospital where she's stealing blood to feed to Morbius, and they're living with a friend of Amanda's. And um, some there's weird goings on, and uh, Morbius end up, ends up, I think this is in the flap, getting kidnapped and being put into a uh, monster fighting arena for rich people. And meanwhile, the Demon Fire cult is uh, has all sorts of crazy machinations that involve Amanda Saint, and it all comes together in this story uh so that's the nutshell i guess uh it's it's an enjoyable book i think i gave it four out of five on goodreads um i will say i have never read anything by brendan deneen if that's how you say his name uh the writing is serviceable I, there wasn't anything that stood out as far as the writing went the style it's very workmanlike for lack of a better way to put it um, there's nothing wrong with it but there's nothing outstanding about it either uh, but the story itself uh, very interesting Morbius comes off as kind of an asshole which I mean he's a monster he's a living vampire um, for anybody who doesn't know um, and the origin story is in here but basically Michael Morbius was a genius, a, a, a Nobel Prize winner in the study of blood and stuff, but he's got a rare blood disease that's killing him, 
And so he's experimenting with vampire bats. And uh, because he only has weeks to live, figures there's no point in not testing this, what he thinks might be a cure on himself. But it turns him instead of, well, I mean, he's not dead. So I guess it cured him, but it turns him into a living vampire. So he doesn't have the weaknesses of a vampire because he's not a mythological creature, but he is very pale. Um, sometimes he's depicted with a like an upturned nose. Um, this doesn't really show that, but I, I love the design of, of Michael Morbius, and he has super strength, and... He can, I guess it's part of the costume. The costume has wings. He can glide. I don't know if that's a power or if that's just a result of the costume. But anyway, uh, so again, he's a living vampire and he's always searching for a cure. He sometimes feeds off the innocent, but at those times when he's trying to be a hero, he feeds off criminals. Uh, he first appeared in Spider-Man, I believe, uh, but he's been in all sorts of stuff. He's had his own uh, ser uh, mini-series and truncated ongoing series. And again, he was in Vampire Tales. He's been also in all sorts of stuff. Um, so, living vampire. Now, he and Amanda are in New York. Uh, the book starts with sort of a cold open where something happens to someone. I won't tell you what it is. Um, but it does introduce certain elements that are going to be important in the book. Then we get Michael and we get Amanda. We get their backstory, uh, sprinkled throughout the book and Amanda's stealing blood for Michael. Michael's out at night and he saves a woman from, Hmm. Hold on. I might be thinking of a different scene. There's a point where he saves a woman from a mugger. Uh, then they come together. We meet the uh, roommate. I feel like her name is Eve. Uh, not a hundred percent sure, but I think it is. Anyway, and then we uh, so they're again they're looking for the demon fire cult. <laughs> Michael ends up uh, being given. Uh, Eve gets him some blood. Wow, how much can I talk about? Eve gets him some blood that's not normal blood. It's like he's, it's like heroin for a living vampire, uh, which leads to eventually Michael getting captured and being put in this arena and having to fight. And there's stuff going down with the demon fire cult and Amanda. And I'm not going to tell you all the details, but I do like the story. It's definitely, I think it fits in with the uh, black and white uh, vampire tales if that's the one that it was in um, in that it's a little more mature there's at least back in the 70s I don't think you had as much violence in the regular comics as you did in the black and white magazines and there's definitely some shocking violence one scene in particular I found very shocking but there's some shocking violence and I mean it's words but there is some nudity uh, which would be covered up in a regular comic or just hinted at, whereas the black and white magazines uh, would show it. Um, so it's it's definitely horror. It has a comic book feel. It feels like a horror comic book. It's a little more mature than your average, say, Spider-Man book. And uh, it fits well in the space that it, in which it takes place again you can read this without being familiar with morbius at all you can read this without having read those vampire tales issues again i keep saying that but i'm not 100 percent sure that's actually the magazine's title but anyway i could look i suppose there is an afterword here um and i know how much you love watching me read so let me see um, does he say, do, 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 uh, yes, Vampire Tales, there we go, see, I was correct, and 
having looked, it reminded me that there's a little backup short story, which is really cool. Uh, so after the whole, the main story takes place, the, the novel itself, there's a little bonus story that takes one of the characters from the main story and sort of the aftermath of what happened and gives us a little short story that could build. It would be interesting to see it uh, being built into something else. It's almost a, uh, an introduction to a, a bigger story, but it's fun. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm not going to, well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the title if I can find it relatively quickly. Do, to do, to do, because it's not that long. Apparently it's longer than I, th okay, so it's, it says here the story continues. And then we have this short story called Caged Carnage. So a little tease there. That was a lot of fun. All right. So overall, like I said, I gave this four out of five. I really enjoyed it. I might be a little biased because I am a big fan of Michael Morbius, the living vampire. Uh, the The writing is is fine. I, I'm, there's nothing negative to say about the writing. I just can't uh, gush about the writing either. Uh, but the story itself is very entertaining. It's like I said, it's it's violent. And it's, there's some creepy stuff, and there's some comic book level stuff, but I'm a huge comic book fan, so I'm not complaining about that. Uh, overall, if you want to read about a living vampire, I say uh, go ahead and pick it up. If you want to read a fun comic book horror novel, go ahead and pick it up. If you're, like the back cover as well, um, if you're a fan of Michael Morbius, absolutely pick it up. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely recommend this. Um, I may look. Uh, this uh, The author has a novel called The Chrysalis, which actually has been on my Amazon wish list for some time. I may check that out. We'll see uh, how his writing is when he's not, you know, doing uh, someone else's property. Does my voice get muted when I hold the book up like that? I don't know. Should I just hold it up to the side? I suppose I could do that. Anyway, that's Morbius, the Living Vampire, Blood Ties. Um, is there anything else I need to say about it? I don't think so. It's got the Demon Fire Cult. It's got... Uh, it's got... Um, you know, surprisingly, no... There are references to other comic book characters, uh, heroes, you know... But there, I, there are no appearances. Like, Spider-Man doesn't show up. Spoilers. Is it a spoiler if I tell you what doesn't happen? I don't know. But, um, yeah. it's uh, I, Oh, I love that cover. I can just look at that, though. Oof. Such a great character design. All right. So, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to follow me on social media. My Twitter is Ronin5757, at Ronin5757, of course. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comics, games, and occasionally animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K, E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H 5757. Almost forgot how to spell my own name there. All right, that's it. This has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith, and until next time, read more books.